Yo, Elliot, I share a very similar outlook on the future as you do. I've been red pill since 2004 and have since planned my life around the circumstances we are seeing today. Because of that foresight, I put myself in a position to have plenty of options available to me today. I have the means to go wherever I find best to ride out this incoming storm. But here's my dilemma. I have my parents in South Florida who are both elderly and ill. I'm doing all I can to support them financially and with the comfort of and love of a good son. The issue is the political and socioeconomic circumstances that are rapidly changing. I have an increased sense of urgency to take action. I have an obligation to my wife and my future family to put us in the best place possible, similar to what you did. This may mean leaving Florida and my parents. I'm having a hard time processing the situation. Where should my priorities lie? Should I feel guilty for making moves? Any insight would be appreciated. P.S. for context, I have to mention that my sister, who also provides a lot of support to them, also lives near them and has no intention of leaving. Well, that's an important piece of information. Thank you. So this is something that my dad used to say to me. My dad is funny, right? And I didn't, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with him, right? Because I have different ideas about how things are supposed to unfold. But my dad will always say to his children, to me, and to my brothers and sisters, you got to go take care of your life. When you leave me and you take a wife and you start having a children, that's your main priority. That's your number one. Don't look back. Don't worry about me. And there's this running joke in my family that when he gets old, he says, when I get old, I can't do anything for, me, for myself. Put me in a wheelchair, roll me out into the sun and let me die. That's what he says. And I don't agree with that, but that's his attitude about it. His attitude about it is that the children need to, like, like if you imagine a, um, one of those races where they pass the baton, a relay race, right? My dad sees it this way. He's like, my father did the best that he could. He gave me that baton and I ran with it. He, my dad never looked back, right? It doesn't mean that he didn't love his father, but he went and he, did, he had to do what he had to do because he had his own family. So he took that baton and ran. And the same thing with his children. He says, once I pass that baton on to you, you have your own family, you have your own home, you have your own doki, right? You got to run and don't look back. Don't turn around on me. Don't compromise your life for me. This was my dad's attitude about it. And I, I'm, I'm curious if your parents have the same attitude or if that's a legitimate attitude for parents to have, right? Like, should I think in that terms for my children, right? This is an open-ended question, right? I want them to go and like, you know, uh, Khalil Gibran says, like, be that bow and arrow, right? Parents are the bow and arrow. And they pull back, they stretch themselves so they can let go. So the child <laughs> takes off, right? You do all you can. I'm doing everything I can. But at some point, what does a parent do? Let go. And what is that? What is that? Uh, arrow do it creates its own havoc it creates its own mess it does its own thing out there at a certain point there's nothing you can do about it right that arrow doesn't look back the arrows let go so is that a resourceful way of thinking things it might be it might be a, it might be a good way of thinking of things but at the same time if you're anything like me and it sounds like you and i are very similar uh that's not good enough for me because as the lord has blessed me and i know has blessed you and there, has, there are certain graces in our lives that give us resources and opportunities to do things that, you know, otherwise we couldn't because life is tough. Um, I saw it fit to buy land that my father could come and live on, right? And I know my dad's getting tired of working. He just passed 70 years old. He's been fixing cars his entire life since he was like 19 years old. And he gets tired of working with, for these guys and doing the things that he's doing. And he, you know, I, I know he's coming to his end and he came here a couple of weeks ago for his birthday and I showed him around. He loves the place. And I got a phone call from him earlier this week. Earlier this week, he called me up, my dad, and he says, hey, son, uh, mark off a week next month that me and your mother could come down. We could stay with you guys so I can check out my new neighborhood. And he, so he was saying that like in a funny way. But in essence, he was saying, you know, I, I think it's actually pretty cool that you have this extra space here. And that I know that you've opened space for me to come and live there with you on that land in Florida. And so I'm, I'm considering it, right? And that made my day. That made me really happy because I want to be able to give back to my dad the same way you want to give back to your parents. I want to give back to my parents. But I say my dad because he's, he's a leader, right? But it was both my parents. I love my mother. I love my mother and my father equally. 
And if my, if, my, if my father brings my mother here, my mother will have a good life. I think my mom would enjoy it too, right? So the way I approached it was, I didn't leave Florida because I know my parents are here, but I live two hours away from them. And I created a situation, and I think you, you know, alluded to wanting to do something similar too, where you buy enough land that you can say, or enough of an estate where you can say, hey, parents, I have a room for you. I have a place for you, right? And I don't know how old your parents are, or how capable they are, but you say that if they're living in a, um, you know, like an old folks home and they're sick and they need help, uh, then maybe that's not a viable option. And your sister seems to be taking care of them in South Florida. So I don't think you should have any guilt, right? I don't think you should have any guilt given that bow and arrow uh, um, analogy that I used before and the assertion of my father, which is the parents need to, the kids need to go and carry the torch, carry the banner, carry the values of the parents, carry the DNA of the parents, but they have to plant their seeds somewhere else and they got to grow their life somewhere else. And if you're lucky enough or the circumstances are, are such that you can help your parents, by all means, do it. I was telling you guys, I'm even a little bit nervous. Like if my dad comes lives here, my dad's not an easy guy to deal with, right? He's opinionated, he's got a big mouth. And, you know, and, and when we were young, when I was younger, I used to argue with him. We used to fight a lot. We've both grown up since, but it's still, you know, that's a tough thing to bring your parents in. I, I've heard that a lot of people, a lot of couples, a lot of families divorce because of bringing their parents into their home, right? So you got to look at your, you got to look at your life and see, does it make sense for me to do it? And it sounds almost like it doesn't make sense for you to do it, especially since you think you're going to be leaving Florida. So I will leave you with this. The only thing that I will leave you with this is, is this. Do not feel guilty. Do not feel ashamed. Do not feel like you need to do anything. I would talk to your parents. I would talk to them about what you plan on doing and let them know that you appreciate them. You love them. You wish them the best. And that there's anything that you could do from afar to support them or to support your sister, maybe paying some of the bills or something like that. But you got to go, bro. You got to go in the Bible. It's biblical too. In the Bible, it says that a man should leave his mother and father and take a wife and become one flesh with her. This is what you're doing. You and your wife, right? You and your wife, you've, you've left your parents, you're becoming one flesh with a woman and you're starting all over again. And that's right. It's right. It's true. It's good. If you can help help, but don't make that your, don't make that something that you beat yourself up on if you can't. And um, I tell you my story just out of inspiration for those who, you know, think the same way. Okay, Michael. Yeah. So it confirms a lot of your own thoughts. Yeah. I think, you know, I think, you know, and I think you, you know that you need to go, then you just need to go, bro. And there's nothing to feel ashamed about. You still love your parents. You honor your parents and you'll honor your parents better. This is my dad's idea. You honor your parents better by being better than them. You honor your parents by taking that, taking that baton and, 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 and running as fast as you can, being the best that you can, crossing that finish line, being a winner, right? That's how you, that's what legacy is for your parents, is that your children are winners now. And I think they'll be grateful to see you being a winner, bro. Hope that helps. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.